Let's now learn how to implant 3-piece IOL. In this first case, a patient with a posterior polar cataract with an open posterior capsule at the end of cortex wash, a viscofluid fluid exchange with a dispersive viscoelastic is performed. Let's move to implantation of the 3-piece IOL in the sulcus. Now, it's extremely important to load the IOL under the microscope and clearly see, as you inject it to the tip of the nozzle, what is the orientation of the leading haptic. Because the orientation of the tip of the leading haptic makes you understand how you need to rotate the nozzle whilst within the eye. Let's now move to the IOL implantation. The first step is the enlargement of the incision to about 3.4 millimeters. You need large enough an incision to allow for the nozzle to enter significantly into the anterior chamber. With counterpressure afforded by the second instrument, the trailing haptic is first introduced into the ciliary sulcus. The second instrument supports the optic during this step, after which the optic is injected into the eye and the haptic almost always comes out outside the eye. Viscoelastic is then introduced into the anterior chamber and a Kuglin hook hitched at the trailing optic haptic junction rotates the IOL in such a manner that the trailing haptic now enters into the ciliary sulcus. Let's now watch the second case. This patient had an equatorial subluxation of the capsular bag. A dispersive viscoelastic is therefore being introduced whilst performing the viscofluid exchange. We now move to the IOL insertion. Please note how the nozzle is introduced almost halfway into the anterior chamber, well within the wound, and this is important to allow the ease of entry of the leading haptic into the ciliary sulcus. Once the leading haptic is in the ciliary sulcus, the rest of the optic is injected into the anterior chamber, and as I mentioned earlier, the trailing haptic is injected almost always outside the eye. Some more viscoelastic is always introduced into the anterior chamber, after which a Kuglin hook hitched against the trailing optic haptic junction easily rotates the IOL in the ciliary sulcus. After which, note how we perform a posterior optic capture. In order to do so, each edge of the optic is just dipped below the rex's edge on either side. We now move to the third and the final case, demonstrating the implantation of a three-piece Alcon IOL in the ciliary sulcus. Let's look at the loading of the IOL. The haptics, being rigid and made of this blue-colored, highly flexible polyether sulfone, are never flexed. And these haptics actually allow for an optimal IOL centration thanks to the high axial stability and radial flexibility. We now proceed to the IOL implantation. We must always have adequate viscoelastic in the anterior chamber as well as a second instrument to support the IOL. In this case, note how the drilling haptic seems to be going in a downward direction. One needs to withdraw a little bit, turn the nozzle around so as to acquire the correct orientation of the leading haptic to ensure that it goes in the ciliary sulcus. The optic then needs to be rotated. It is in the anterior chamber whilst the drilling haptic is still outside the eye. Drilling haptic is drawn into the eye in the anterior chamber. The leading haptic is rotated and its position in the ciliary sulcus confirmed. Having done so, some more viscoelastic is injected into the anterior chamber, after which the trailing optic haptic junction, hitched with a Kuglin hook, is rotated into the ciliary sulcus. The IOL is then centered. This brings us to the end of the third case. Having understood the principles of insertion of a three-piece IOL, I hope now you will all be successful in safely implanting three-piece IOLs in the ciliary sulcus. Thank you.